Afternoon guys, um, we're on the heels of another northerly trip here, that'll be Jeff and I. Um, we're heading up to look for what we usually look for, uh, which is a combination of caves, minerals, gems, that kind of thing. So before we actually head up there, I'd like to show you a little something about a recent trip I did up to the Goods Farm Corundum, and um, also just a, a brief look here at uh, the qualities of, of gem sapphire. and. Uh, that kind of thing, which are all varieties of, of corundum, which is an aluminum oxide. So the gem corundum, or sapphire or ruby, uh, are typified in particular by their, um, their color. And if we're looking at, at the actual mineral corundum, we're uh, talking about a lot of times we can recognize it by its shape. Um, if we bring it into a lab or, or uh, wherever you want to examine it at home, uh, you'll often be able to do this with a refractometer. Uh, you can look at it in a spectroscope, which has certain, you know, there's certain properties in terms of uh, how the iron or the chromium shows itself within the spectrum. And uh, you could also do a specific get gravity weighing of the mineral itself, and it's quite, quite obviously letting you know that this particular mineral will be corundum. So what happens? Focusing on the video, and not on the uh, on the dinner, which I'm supposedly cooking. Oh well. So I guess starting off, I'd like to just kind of draw your attention to this a uh, couple of gem varieties of sapphire here. You'll notice this is a, a dark green. Uh, it's a very light blue. Uh, it's almost like an olivey green, and then we've got a yellow sapphire. So basically, when we're talking about sapphire and its various colors, uh, you would understand that it's related to uh, the replacement of um, aluminum within the crystal structure by uh, titanium and iron. And the more the iron, the darker the, uh, the sapphire will typically be. The, um, the iron will show itself uh, within a, a sapphire uh, absorption spectrum, which you would see in a, in a little spectroscope here, or even a nice big spectroscope. Um, it will show itself usually around a 470 nanometer uh, marking within the spectroscope, and oftentimes uh, it's the blue, the green, and the yellow sapphire that show this iron spectrum. Uh, of course, you've also got uh, vanadium and chromium spectrums, more typical to the ruby. Um, and sometimes the, the three lines of the iron spectrum will, will come together and actually become two lines. Uh, so it's, it's not a, a pure science the spectrum thing in identifying the sapphire. More likely you would want to use something like the refractive index, which you would pick up using the refractometer. Corundum comes in, uh, as a mineral, comes in many shapes. Um, uh, habits, I guess, as you could say. It is of the trigonal crystal system, the habit being the specific shape that it's found. And of course, the habit differs for the most part depending upon the location that the mineral is found in. So I've got a, an example here. Obviously, that's a, that's a columnar habit. Uh, as you can see, six sided or hexagonal. Uh, this is what we're finding at the Goods Farm, even though typically it's said on, on various references that we're finding spindle crystals there, not my experience of it. This is a spindle. Okay, You'll notice there are striations across the length of the spindle, and that, that there is what we, we call the C-axis. Remember that, it's important. C-axis is generally the length, uh, the longer length of the particular prism. This is a barrel, or uh, what you might call a, a columnar hexagonal prism. You'll notice there's little tiny rhombohedral faces on alternating corners. goes around, it's a six-sided uh, barrel. Here's an example of a pink sapphire. Usually the ruby's found in a tabular form. This is a little pink uh, segment of pink sapphire in a, in a tabular form. Uh, but it's, it's really not so common to your typical sapphire. Back in 2001, I was at a pawn shop in Toronto uh, looking through their various junk gems. And they had a box of, of um, uh, peridot, and within that box, I see all these little tiny stones that were absolutely not peridot, even though the color was quite similar. What tipped me off was the luster. The luster is way, way higher in sapphire than it was in peridot. So I immediately pulled them out, 
checked them at home with the refractometer and discovered that they were um, were sapphires and the sapphire luster is said to be sub adamantine which is basically uh, between the luster of glass and a, a diamond it's it's quite a lustrous stone you can see just kind of you can see how it's glinting off this synthetic yellow sapphire i'm assuming it's synthetic i haven't looked at it up close um, very very lustrous as a stone goes this is the last thing i briefly want to talk about here is the um, what you might see inside a, a gem quality uh, sapphire. Uh, one example would be the growth, the growth lines, which would parallel crystal faces if, if the actual stone were not cut. But if it's cut, you might see these uh, faces, dark shadows, uh, or more intense lines of color uh, moving around within the actual stone itself. Uh, you might see what would be called uh, fingerprint inclusions which looked like a fingerprint inside, uh, very common in the Sri Lankan saf sapphires. And then there's also um, uh, rutile, exolved rutile uh, spines. Uh, generally, you don't usually see them with, with your eye, but you can, it's what's responsible for uh, the asterism or the star effect in a, in a star sapphire. So I have two examples here. Uh, the, uh, there's a, a synthetic blue star sapphire. You can tell it's synthetic. The color is way too good. The star is way too uh, amazing and uh, even to be a, a natural. And of course, if you look on the backs of these two cabochon cut um, star sapphires, you can see the difference between the synthetic back and the natural back. Obviously, the natural back looks more natural, uh, and the synthetic has been very smoothly shaved. Uh, and polished. So this is Jewelville Road and uh, we're on our way to Rosenthal and in turn the uh, Goods Farm Corundum deposit. Wow, there's some interesting stuff around here. Look at that. A lot of the area here is kind of abandoned. Beautifully scenic though. Here I am. I'm at the Goods Farm. Uh, five bucks to collect. Uh, we're looking at uh, corundum, spindles of bluish gray corundum in um, Nephilim, white Nephilim. So I was instructed to just go through the gates, close them behind me so the cows don't get out and it should be up there on top of the... So here we are, it's actually a, a white pegmatite and I can see little bits of sodalite in it as well, um, cancronite as well. Uh, this stuff was, uh, the deposit itself was discovered in, I think it was 1897 and uh, worked at a mill down in Palmer's Rapids. We just came through Palmer's Rapids on the way up here. So I'll have a look around, see what's, see what's in here. Looks like there's another pit here. So I've chiseled loose a corundum crystal here. You can just see it by my thumb. Um, nothing's going to come easy here though. This is pretty hard rock, so you can see the edges, the top ends of various corundum crystals that have been broken off. Um, you're going to have to work at it with a hammer and chisel for sure, right? Uh, lots of soda like that. So this being a um, Nephilim cyanite, uh, apparently at one time it was mistaken for a crystalline limestone, like a marble. And I gotta admit, it looks very much like a like a marble, but it's not. you know, you can see maybe the uh, see the blue of the um, sodalite. A uh, little more tapping with the rock, and look at it—it's coming away quite nicely. I think I'll stop there. Here's a nice little spindle, six-sided. So here's the secret. Just this layer right here. Let me show you where it is. Back away. See where that is? Boom. That's where I'm finding the stuff. Right in that layer, right along the base. I'm just cleaving off pieces and then pounding them down to smaller pieces and the corundum's dropping out. Okay. So as the crystals seem to get bigger, they get this bronzy sort of color. I much prefer them when they're small and sort of bluish gray and the crystals are a lot nicer too, a lot more, I don't know. So if you come to the Goots uh, Farm Corundum Deposit, you need a, preferably a micro blaster, but if not, a very large sledgehammer and several um, chisels.